Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to continue talking about the brand new Synology DS1621 Plus. I've already done my hardware review, I'm going to start my recordings with Plex Media Server and 10 GBE testing and doing all kinds of stuff with this to show you guys what it can do. But today I want to give you the 5x5, that's what I do with all of the new NASIs lately, it is five reasons to buy the brand new DS1621 Plus and five reasons you might not want to buy it. So let's get straight into it. The first reason that you might want to buy this NAS is quite simply Ryzen. It is the first NAS that Synology have deigned to provide with a Ryzen based processor. Now I know it's not high high blistering Ryzen 357 but it is still an embedded Ryzen and Ryzen as a processor making its way into network attached storage is a very very good thing. Synology are not the first brand to embrace Ryzen processors in their systems but I will say Synology's software has been dire in need of processors like Ryzen in the past. They've embraced Xeon, they've embraced Pentium and Celeron and up until recently, it was always Atom processors that ended up on these systems. So the fact that they've gone ahead and embraced a Ryzen-based processor is a very, very good thing because of the power consumption um, versus the output of that CPU. It definitely beats a number of other processors at this level right now at this price. And reason number two, you might want to buy the brand new DS1621 Plus is because it has Synology Hybrid RAID. One of the biggest criticisms that both myself and a lot of you guys in the comments had about this 6 bay over here, the DS1621XS Plus, was that although it was very, very powerful, it had 10 GBE and it had um, a Xeon-based processor and it had all that functionality and stuff, it didn't have Synology Hybrid RAID. Synology doesn't feel that Synology Hybrid RAID gives you the performance that the top, top, top tier requires compared with the traditional ray configurations that we know of. But it has to be said that at this level, at this six bay, the throughput that it has the potential to give you and the target audience it has in mind are very much a Synology Hybrid RAID territory or SHR. For those that aren't aware, Synology Hybrid RAID is the ability to mix and match drives in your configuration, something you're never gonna do on day one. Most of users that buy this device would either partially populate with a, you know, three to four discs and add discs as they need them, or have a hot spare, or alternatively, will buy, you know, smaller drives on day one. They're not going to hit the 14, 16, 18, 20 TB storage spaces. They're going to hit the four, the six, and the eights. So, a few years down the line, they might start running out of storage. And that is when Synology Hybrid RAID, when you can mix and match the drives and introduce larger drives for the RAID configuration to absorb it and be able to make the most out of multiple larger drives in a RAID array, is just something traditional RAID doesn't give you and why SHR from Synology is so damn desirable. Reason number three that you might buy this brand new NAS is that it arrives with NVMe drive support. That's right, you can install two NVMe's inside this device and it will allow you to utilize the high, um, high IOPS, high performance and low latency that those drives bring to the table and present those benefits to a large array of slower but arguably more affordable and larger storage capacity hard drives in a RAID. Synology have really, really been hitting the subject of caching hard um, over the last couple of years and certainly in DSM-7 we're seeing improvements on caching across the board. And it's really good to see that this six bay, the follow up to the 16, 18 plus, and a few other devices behind it, although six bays are relatively new from Synology, it's great to see this tier start arriving with NVMe SSD caching inside. And I'm glad to see it's included in this while still maintaining that price point of its predecessor. Reason number four that you might go for this brand new NAS is the PCIe upgrade slot. It's a NAS that allows you to improve its uh, network connectivity or in some cases internal performance in its lifespan. There's an MV, uh, sorry, a PCIe slot there on the rear of the device and that PCIe is PCIe Gen 3 times 8 um, which means you can get a terrific throughput there for uh, a 10 GBE card or a dual port 10 GBE card and allows you to add further performance on this system so more uh, one or so 10, 20, 30 connected users on a supported network switch, whether they are using link aggregation or not, or they are using 10G, or this is 10G and they're all on 1G, there's loads of ways in which you can improve the external throughput of this device 
thanks to that external um, upgradability. The fact that it doesn't arrive with 10 GBU by default may ruffle some feathers, and I'll talk about that in the other half of the video, but I will say that at this price point, with that PCI upgradability in conjunction with the NVMe SSD caching inside, something that a lot of users until the last year or so always had to choose between is a damn fine thing. Reason number five, that you may go for this brand new NAS, and this is more kind of general Synology portfolio centric, it's where it sits in the family tree. When you look at the devices available from Synology, there's a five bay that was recently released at DS1520+, Plus, a Celeron five bay, uh, with a, a 1 GBE 4 LAN ports, and above it, you have the DS1819 Plus. And this sits squarely in the middle, not just in terms of hierarchy between a 5 and an 8 bay, but in terms of the price point. We've reached a point with Synology where a number of their solutions are about £100 or so difference between them. And with each tier, the functionality improves. They become more tailored solutions, such as this being... Although it has great multimedia support, it doesn't rival um, a lot of the Celeron-based uh, multimedia handling. And it does have great um, surveillance and VM support and a whole Synology collaboration suite, but it doesn't have the storage capabilities of the 8 bay above it. What I'm saying is it fits really, really well in the portfolio in terms of its value between that 5 bay and that 8 bay. And it just fleshes out the portfolio beautifully for users that are trying to look at their budget and say... I need half a dozen of this and six dozen of the other. This does a very good job of refining the portfolio even further. But, as I say, this device is not perfect and it's not for everyone. There are five reasons from me that you might not want to buy this. Reason number one, I've already kind of touched on this, is it's 1GBE only. It's still great that it has four 1GBE LAN ports there on the rear. And again, what that means with link aggregation, you've got a potential 440 megabytes per second, or port trunking, uh, uh, connectivity between this and a smart managed switch. But I will say a number of you do grumble about seeing more Synology devices arriving with 1GBE copper, wondering why we're not seeing 2.5GBE or 5GBE becoming as standard. The affordability of 2.5GBE has reached a point where I'm surprised Synology has not embraced it. Indeed, we thought they were going to this year. At the end of last year, at their live launch event, they did reveal the 1620XS, which eventually became the device behind me, but that featured 2.5 GBE. It looks like they are indeed that and just decided it either wasn't necessary or didn't fit within that budget point. Nevertheless, it would have been great to see this device with 2.5 GBE. And I know a number of you are going to put that in the comments, so I thought I'd get there ahead of you. Reason number two, you might not utilize this device. And a lot of these points, I will argue, you have heard before in my 5x5 videos because a lot of them are brand centric. They are choices by the brand. And this second reason is those NVMe bays. The fact that you can't use them for raw storage. Now, in some devices we've seen, such as the Celeron and the 1520 and the 920 and stuff like that, limitations could be argued in terms of the chipset chip and the PCIe lanes being dedicated to a number of the features and functionality of a device like this. This arrives, that CPU, with 16 PCIe lanes inside this. And although there are lots of functionality such as the uh, the PCI upgrade slot, the NVMe SSD bays inside, the four LAN ports there on the bottom, the expandability of those eSATA ports there on the bottom. I still argue that users would like to take advantage of the NVMe speeds, even in um, throttled NVMe at two times four or even two times two. <coughs> they would like to be able to utilize NVMe for raw storage. And the fact that Synology still maintains that they only want the NVMEs to be used for SSD caching to bolster the performance of the internal hard drives and those IOPS and speeds, I know will upset some of you who see NVMe on a NAS and go, boom, take my money. You need to know that you're not going to be able to utilize it for raw storage overall. Reason number three, you might not consider this device. And again, this is far more long term. It's to do with those expansion ports there. This device has got two eSATA expansion ports there that allow you to attach the DX517 expansion device to each of them, allowing you with the six bays here of traditional hard drive storage to add five draw drives that side and five more drives this side and expand your storage pool accordingly if you've set the right RAID and take advantage of that. So what's my complaint? Well, it's the idea that you can only attach the two five bay expansions. There's no support 
of the 12 bay expansion, the DX1215. Uh, there was even a Tar Winston Odyssey had a 2 bay expansion, uh, and that's long since departed. The point I'm getting at is with the expansion devices, two five bay expansions is a little messy. And I'm surprised Synology hasn't considered, or they probably have considered, or at least looked at, an 8-bay expansion, or something in between. 5 or 12-bay expansions, and you are kind of locked in to this device only allowing that small amount of expandability, uh, with two expansions, each of which require their own power source and need to be cabled in. It's quite messy overall, and I know eSATA with its 6 gigabits per second is arguably the reason behind that, but still nevertheless, I do think it's an odd expansion choice that I think a number of users out there would like a middle ground in the form of an 8 bay, or at least the ability to go higher than those two 5 bays overall. Those that want to expand gradually makes perfect sense, but those that are buying this device for its raw storage, I mean sorry, its raw power, and then want to add storage later, it's less convenient. Reason number four that you may not want to get this device comes back to that CPU because of all the praise I'm heaping on it, it would be remiss of me not to highlight once again that it is a Ryzen embedded SoC processor. It doesn't have um, graphics embedded inside. It doesn't have a transcoding engine for Plex. It doesn't have uh, enhanced graphical support with the GPU power to back up the visual uh, data handling that this system may encounter with things like surveillance, with things like virtualization, like things like 4K or 1080p handling. Without that GPU inside, you're going to end up utilizing more raw power. And if you are running far more visually demanding uh, data processes, be they remotely or externally, by uh, you know editing files on the fly over 10 GBE, you may find that CPU will hit something of a bottleneck the minute you're trying to max it out. It's not by any means low powered 2.2 gigahertz quad core I, um, x86 64 bit processor is still pretty good but i would have loved to have seen an embedded graphics chip as we saw in the likes of the celeron in the tier lower than this or some of the older generation that even arrived with an i3 remember that whoa that was a while ago but it did exist trust me and reason number five that you may wish to uh, may wish to give this device a miss and again this isn't actually my opinion, but it is something that you guys say in the comments enough that I do think it warrants bringing up at least to you. And that is the metal chassis on this device. Now, if you are in relative close proximity to this device, a lot of the noise that gets generated will come from the fans, you know, their rotation, the humming. A lot of that noise may come from the enterprise level drive you put inside, higher than 8 or 10 TB. They're going to make a bit more noise, the clicks, hums and whirs of modern hard drives, where they're trying to balance more and more storage going into those platters and techniques that utilise the magnetic recording of the disks inside those uh, drives. They all make their impact in the bigger drives with larger RPM speeds make more noise. So a lot of the noise isn't even Synology's fault, but it is arguable, I would say, that a metal chassis like this is going to generate a little bit more of that vibration, a little bit more of that noise, and it's going to increase the DBA of that sound level just a little bit. And if you're in close proximity, that might irritate the hell out of you. It is by no means a noisy NAS. I used to run an 8-bay of the earlier generation 1815 for quite a long time in relative close proximity. It didn't make that much noise, but the minute you compare it to the 4 or the 5-bay in their plastic chassis, you do notice the difference. So do bear that in mind, that metal chassis NASes do make just a pinch more noise, and if you're sensitive, a pinch can be a lot. But this has been... Five reasons to buy the brand new DS1621 Plus and five reasons you might want to give it a miss. Let me know what you guys think. If you agree or disagree, why not let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe and do visit the link in the description to NAS Compares. Where we've detailed these along with some other points about this NAS so you can learn more. I will see you next time.